Here we go, man. First day of the week, getting ready for the Packers. It is an improved team from uh, who we played last time. Defense is getting takeaways. Uh, you know, Clark is a force in the middle. And uh, I think these two backers are really good players. Uh, Alexander's tough on the edge. Douglas is a smart, crafty guy. Offensively, they're running the ball much better. Uh, the back's dangerous. Both of them are really dangerous. You can't sleep on Dylan either. Uh, you know, the young receivers are really growing and uh, showing up. And Rodgers is Rodgers. You know, he's a Hall of Fame quarterback. And their special teams are getting returns with Mixon. So uh, we got our hands full, but we're up to the challenge. And so it all comes down to this. Aaron Rodgers and the Packers in Lambeau, Week 18, prime time. Detroit not only needs to beat the Packers, but in a bizarre twist of fates, we're all going to be rooting for the Rams to upset the Seattle Seahawks so that we can have our first playoff berth since 2016. That's like an entire generation in internet years. Can the Red Hot Lions go into the historic Lambeau Field and make a little history of our own to become the second team in NFL history to start the season 1-6 in six and make it into the playoffs? Or will Aaron Rodgers and the Packers prove to be the more experienced, more knowledgeable, and more talented team and finally put an end to our Cinderella season? The lights are going to be bright. This will be our toughest fight. Hang on to your hats, boys, because it all comes down to this Sunday night. Don't do that. Just, just don't do that. Welcome to Detroit. All right, welcome back, fellas. As you guys know, I'm Hat and Beard, the host of this channel. Before we get too far down the line, go ahead and like this video, subscribe to the channel, share this video around with all of your friends, and make sure to ring the bell so that you never miss out on any future content, and you can become part of the Hat and Beard Gang. Make sure to comment down below who you think is going to win between the LA Rams and the Seattle Seahawks. Defensively, fellas, it comes down to one simple thing, controlling the line of scrimmage. If we can control the line of scrimmage and bottle up A.J. Dillon and Aaron Jones, we should have a relatively successful day. Controlling the line of scrimmage will be able to cover up a lot on our back end. We know that Aaron Rodgers is slightly more mobile than your average quarterback, not quite where he was, say, six years ago. We need to stop the run, put the ball in Aaron Rodgers' hand, and simultaneously, we need to get a lot of pressure on Aaron Rodgers. I've been saying it all season long, fellas. If we can create pressure, we can cover up a lot on the back end. We all know that our secondary is suspect, at best. Kirby Joseph, you're going to have to step up just like you did against the Packers earlier on in the season when you won NFC Defensive Player of the Week. We're going to need a huge game out of all of our defensive rookies. I'm talking Hutch. I'm talking Houston. I'm talking Rodrigo needs to somehow be able to play in pass coverage a little bit better than he has in the past couple weeks because Bob Tanyan is not a trash tight end, and we know that our defense is suspect to being obliterated by tight ends. Isaiah Bugs and Aleem McNeil need to control the interior part of the defensive line, and Aaron Rodgers needs to feel a lot of heat from the outside. We're going to need to be rotating in a lot of our players. This is where I've been talking that it's nice to have guys coming back like a Romeo Okora, like a Josh Paschal, because then you can rotate fresh legs in in an incredibly important game on the back end of the season. Win and you're in, baby. We got to win this one to even have a fighting chance of getting in. I know we need Seattle to lose, but if the Lions can also just even, worst case scenario, upset the Packers, I'm loving it. On the offensive side of the ball, we know that our offense travels a lot better than our defense, okay? But our offense isn't engineered to play from behind. We do not play catch up very well. So tell me if you've heard this one before, fellas. Our offensive line needs to come out and be physical, control the line of scrimmage to assert the run game. We need both of our backs to be incredibly productive. I cannot have either one of those two running backs being disappeared midway through the game because they're just not being productive, i.e. in the Carolina game. This game is a perfectly scripted narrative for the Jay Willie revenge game. Jay, as you guys know, Jamal Williams used to play in Green Bay and was cut, and then he came here and he's been the embodiment of Dan Campbell on the field. Jamal Williams this game can also go out and break Barry Sanders' franchise r rushing touchdown record for most touchdowns in a single season. The narrative is perfect. Revenge game, break the franchise record, go out and punish the team in prime time, carry them on your back just like you did while DeAndre Swift was limited. When DeAndre Swift was limited, we relied on Jay Willie quite a bit and he answered the call. 
We don't need him to be the primary back, but he needs to go out and be the primary back. Play aggressive, pound the rock, lean on the offensive line, take the ball out of Jared Goff's hands. Don't make Jared Goff throw 30 times a game. Yeah, last week was kind of an anomaly. We were firing on all cylinders. Jared Goff doesn't play outside so great. It's going to be cold. It's going to be at night. The weather probably won't be as great as it is, you know, inside Ford Field. Take the pressure off of Jared Goff. I'm a Jared Goff truther, but I don't need him to go out and be the MVP of the league this game. Rely on the run game. Lean on your offensive line. Grind the clock. Beat down the Packers defense. They have good corners. Jair Alexander is one of the top five corners in the league. We don't need to be going up against him throwing at a top corner like that. They have a young secondary, a young front seven. They're kind of similar to us on defense. However, I think their defense is a little bit better than us. They have some better players in some better positions. Don't go after them. Lean on your strengths, both offensively and defensively. Our front seven on defense is solid. Our front five on offense is top five in the league hands down. Frank Ragnow is a pro bowler and Penny Sewell got snubbed hardcore. Keep Jared Goff upright. Don't let him feel the pressure the little bit that he does have to drop back. Don't force anything. Pound the rock. Utilize your tight ends. Dismantle their defense the way Ben Johnson has been doing the last couple of weeks outside of the Carolina game. Let him be surgical. Let Jared Goff execute the game plan. Don't get off script because if you get off script, we know that it's kind of chaotic. In summary, you guys, this game's going to come down to an old Bill Walsh saying. You got to beat your man to the punch. If we can beat the backers to the punch, if we can be more physical, if we can withstand the blows, this is going to be a heavyweight fight, fellas. We got to be the more team to win this game. We have to be more hungry, more aggressive, more reserved, more controlled, more intelligent. We have to have to want it more. We have to be the more team team and if we are the more team if we can get the pressure on the quarterback if we can shut down the run game if we can establish our run game if we can control the clock go out and play smart sound fundamental football just like i've been saying all season long don't get cute with it fellas be smart rely on your coaching staff rely on your players be confident we can do this we're the team of destiny keep the old man out of the playoffs keep the just just Give them one final just insult on their way out the door. Just continue to win, 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 even if it's for nothing. Even if you can't get into the playoffs, continue to win because we have a strong, solid foundation that we're going to be building on for the next five, six, seven, eight, ten years, hopefully. Dan Campbell and Brad Holmes have built something special here in Detroit, and this game is 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 just a cherry on top because if we do get into the playoffs, we're a year ahead of schedule. If we don't get into the playoffs, we're still significantly ahead of schedule from where we were last Last year. I got the Lions winning in a close one, 31-28. Michael Badgley is the hero of the game. You know, hopefully Jay Willie can pound the rock. Hopefully DeAndre Swift is effective. I don't want to see us throwing the ball around too much, but you know, you got to do what you got to do. Execute the game plan. Go out, win this one, fellas, and hope the Rams can upset the Seattle Seahawks and we can get our way into the playoffs. That's all you need to do. I've been saying it for weeks. We just got to get to the dance. All you got to do is get to the dance, and it's a whole new season. Go Lions. Hope you guys have a good weekend. We need to go out there and get this W. It would be pandemonium if we make it to the playoffs. I don't even know how I'll be able to process it. And I'm not going to be completely disappointed if we lose because this season has been way better than it started off and even more, even better than we could have projected. So have a good weekend, fellas. I know it got kind of rambly at the end there, but uh, it is what it is. Uh, we'll catch you guys in the next one. Have a good weekend. Peace. Time to 23 skidoo. Or should I say 69 skidoo. She said that my pornos were boring.